Hello, freak bitches. So we set ourselves up for, I think, a currency crisis, not just a financial crisis where, where mortgages are in trouble, but where the dollar itself is collapsing. Our money is collapsing. Prices are skyrocketing. It's going to really hit the average American much more than just the stock market going down. Right? When your money is going down, right? when the cost of living is skyrocketing, right? that is going to be a big problem. For a lot of people, that that's where we're headed. It's ultimately going to be a dollar crisis, and that's really, you know, like my, in my business, in my brokerage firm, in Europe Pacific Capital, that's what I'm trying to do is help people protect their wealth by getting out of U.S. dollar assets, by investing in Singapore, in Switzerland, in New Zealand, in Hong Kong, in other countries, owning other assets, you know, to try to protect themselves from this crisis that, you know, is coming. You know, and, and most people are going to get blindsided by it, just like they were by the last one. So what is the crisis, and wh- how exactly do you feel it's going to go down? Because I did watch some of your videos about the housing crisis from 2008. Mm-hmm. You're predicting it years in advance. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, things always happen, you know, I, I see things years before they happen. Cause I and understand. you're not the only one, right? No. This, this is something amongst your peers and your colleagues, you guys are all discussing this. Well, I mean, I mean, there some. are people, most people who feel the way I do maybe aren't, they weren't on television saying it. They were right. saying it, you know, to their buddies, you know, in their own living rooms, and they were getting laughed at just like I was. You know, I guess I used to get emails from people, hey, I've been saying, now this is exactly what I've been saying, and everybody thinks I'm crazy. And, you know, it's just, you know, they're the same one. It's everybody else that's crazy that just it gets caught up in it. But w- the, what's going to happen is we are going to go back at some point into another statistic recession. I mean, I think that we've kind of been in one this whole recovery because I don't think the government numbers are really that accurate. I don't think that inflation is as low as they claim, at least as measured by the consumer prices. So I think that the economy has actually been contracting during the years that we've been pretending it's been growing. But I do think at some point, statistically, we will go back into a technical recession where even the government admits that the economy is shrinking, right? Where the GDP is negative for a couple of quarters in a row. And then what is the government going to do as a result of that? They're going to do exactly what they did before. They're going to take interest rates and bring them back to zero from wherever they are. The difference is normally they lower interest rates. And then by the time there's another recession, they're way back up four, five, six percent. This time, they, they, they barely got them back to 1%, and they kept them at zero for seven, eight years, which is unprecedented. And, of course, the mistakes that are made are a consequence of money being too cheap, right? The reason that we had a real estate bubble, the main reason, was because Alan Greenspan lowered interest rates to 1% and left them there for about a year and a half, and then took about a year and a half to, rise them, to raise them back up to normal. So you had a few years of artificially low interest rates, and that gave us this huge housing bubble. Well... We had seven, eight years of zero. I mean, the, the mistakes that have been made under Obama dwarfs the mistakes that were made under Bush. And these are mistakes that are a consequence of money being too cheap, of the government setting the price of money as opposed to the free market. You get too much debt. You get too much speculation. And so we've got a much bigger bubble now. And when the this one pops because it's so much bigger, right? So then all of a sudden, the Fed has to cut interest rates again. And now what happens to the dollar? Because see, the dollar has been rising these past few years because everybody thought, oh, the Fed's going to normalize interest rates. The Fed's going to shrink the balance sheet. When none of this stuff happens, when the Fed goes back to another round of quantitative easing, when they got to crank up the printing presses, when they don't shrink the balance sheet, but they blow it even bigger, right? It goes to five and a half trillion, six and a half trillion. I think the bottom's going to drop out of the dollar. I think the dollar is going to get killed, the opposite of what happened in 08. When the financial crisis hit in 08, the dollar had been falling for seven years. It was at an all-time record low. And then when the crisis hit, it actually caused people to buy the dollar. Uh, But I think this next crisis is going to be the big sell signal for the dollar. People are going to rush out of the dollar as the Fed has to go back to more QE, as people realize that this is what I said for the beginning. This is a monetary roach motel, right? The Fed checked us in, and they ain't checking us out. There's no way to normalize rates. There's no way to shrink the balance sheet. And when people realize that that this is a permanent situation, the bottom drops out of the dollar, and then commodity prices really start to rise. Remember when oil prices went from like $20 a barrel in in 2001 up to $100? 150, right? That was happening because the dollar was falling. And as the dollar starts to fall, all these commodity prices are going to rise again. And now inflation is really going to pick up the way they measure it. And the the government can't do anything about it. They can't raise interest rates because if they raise interest rates, they collapse everything. All the banks that were too big to fail, they're bigger now. And it would be even worse if they failed. So they can't let rates go up. Because banks absorbed other banks. They got bigger. 
And now you have all these banks that have all these long-term loans that have low coupons on them. If interest rates go up, all these big banks are going to fail. I mean, people think rising rates are going to be good for banks. They're going to destroy the banks. They're going to destroy the housing market. I mean, and the government, this is the biggest thing. Look at the national debt. The national debt is about $20 trillion. The, the bonded debt. And that, of course, that doesn't even count all the unfunded liabilities. That's just where the government has sold a bond, right, a treasury bond. That's about $20 trillion. Well, what would happen if interest rates went to 10%? Well, it would cost the government $2 trillion a year just to pay the interest on that, 20, 000, uh, on that $20 trillion. We don't have anywhere close to that. I mean, right now, interest rates are almost zero, and we're spending about $250 billion a year on interest. But if interest rates actually went up, because the Fed had to fight inflation, the Treasury would have to default. They, they would have to tell the crew, we can't pay on these bonds. What are you showing me, Jamie? Is this the national debt? Oh, currently? that's the national debt oh, crock. Oh, God, yeah. look at it spinning. Is it at $20 trillion yet? It's oh, through. it's so terrible. Uh, pretty yeah. close, Nineteen nine seven three. Look at it yeah. spinning. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. That's but, horrific. But um, And so, you know, obviously, the Fed has to keep interest rates low so the government can service that debt. Look at Medicare, Medicaid. Jesus Christ. Well, what yeah, is that? you can find what the is per that? capita. You add it all up. That's not know. even a billion. Is that a trillion? Huh? What? That's Which not even a trillion. At? That right there. What is that? No, that's 1.1 trillion. Oh, it is? But that's oh, well, largest those... budget items. Those are budget items. Oh. That's the budget. Social Security. That's not the debt. That's what they're spending. Oh. God. See, look at those numbers. If you go down lower, they'll probably have all the unfunded liabilities that are on that page somewhere. You know, and then oh they break it God. down. Then they break it down per capita, you know, per taxpayer. I mean, it's enormous. But my point is that we've got like an adjustable rate mortgage on that national debt. The government's got ultra cheap money. If interest rates spike, there's no way that the government can pay that debt. This is hypnotic. <laughs> it really is terrifying. I've never seen it before. I've never seen it before either. Yeah, I've that's seen why that I'm saying Puerto Rico. Square. Puerto Rico would be. It, it would be so idiotic for Puerto Rico to want to join the union and absorb their share of that debt. Now, for the average person like myself who has zero understanding of the financial system, you listen to Trump talk about the economy booming and it's it's on an upward thing and <clears throat> unemployment is down and how jobs are up. Yeah, I mean, bullshit. That's, yeah, that's what's really bothering me about Trump is the hypocrisy because when Trump was a candidate. And he got elected because, by and large, he told the truth about the phony nature of the recovery. Obama was out there talking about how great things were. And Trump was like, BS, it's not great. Oh, you're talking about low unemployment? That m number is bogus. The real unemployment rate is 20% or 25%. Right, because and he people would, stop looking for jobs he, yeah, and it doesn't count anymore. Yeah, people are, you know, they gave up looking so they don't have a job. They're not counted as being unemployed. And he pointed out... That all the jobs like here, this is irony, right? So one of the byproducts of Obamacare, Obamacare said that if you have a full time worker, you have to give him health insurance, right? And full time was anyone that worked 30 hours or more. Well, employers aren't dumb. They can do math. Hey, if I if this guy is working uh, 40 hours a week, I got to I got to give him health insurance, which is very expensive. But if he works 29 hours a week, I don't. Right. So what happened? Employers started transitioning their workforces from full-time workers to part-time workers. Well, what happens if I'm going to have only part-time workers? I'm going to have more workers, right? Because each one is working fewer hours. So I'm going to have to have more, I'm, I have more jobs, right? If I have, if I had 500 part-time jobs, but now I have a thousand, I mean, if I had 500 full-time employees, but now I have a thousand part-time employees, that's twice as many jobs. Obama got credit for all those extra jobs, right? As we were, as we were destroying full-time jobs and replacing them with two part-time jobs, we got all these jobs. So Trump was honest as a candidate. These are low-paying jobs. These are crappy jobs. You know, And a lot of the people that were getting jobs were older people who don't want jobs. They were retired. And now they're working at McDonald's part-time because they can't live on their retirement money. And in fact, you know, when you look at the labor force participation rate that he would talk about, you know, where labor force participation is collapsing is with young people. People in their 20s and 30s can't get jobs. Meanwhile, 70 and 80 year olds are working in record percentages, right? Because they can't afford to retire and their grandkids can't get a job. But so Trump was telling the truth about how bad the economy really was. And that resonated. A lot of blue collar guys, a lot of uh, Democrats in the Midwest voted for Trump because he got it. He understood, their, he felt their pain, right? Like Bill Clinton. And Obama was in a fantasy. I mean, Hillary was pretending that everything was great under Obama. And people didn't want four more years of that. So they voted for Trump. And also, you know, when Trump was a candidate, 
he talked about the stock market because, oh, the stock market was going up when Obama was president. And Trump said, well, it's a bubble. Who cares about the stock market? This is a big, fat, ugly bubble. Wait till it pops. Okay. He was right about that. Now he's president. What is he saying? Every time I see him, the stock market's a new record high. This is fantastic. You know, it's all because of me. This is great. And when the jobs numbers come out, oh, this is, look how low the unemployment rate is. This is the lowest it's been in 15 years. I'm doing a great job. I'm doing, nothing has changed. This is the exact same economy he inherited. It's the same crappy jobs. It's the same stock market bubble. The only difference is he's not a candidate anymore. He's the president. And now he's trying to market the same crappy economy that Obama had and pretending everything is good. And I wish he was he would stay true to the candidate and admit, you know what, the economy is still a disaster because nothing has changed, right? He was going to drain the swamp. Instead, he just poured more water in the same swamp. Let, you know, but to actually drain it means to really shake things up. And in a way, he's shaking things up, but not the way that's going to get meaningful change for the country, right? The, the shaking up that he's doing is not what people were voting for. Right? We really need real substantive economic change, but the president is not able to deliver it. He's surrounded himself with the same cronies that, that were around in the Bush administration. I mean, what good is going back to Bush? <laughs>